After the fats and oils, we're going to talk about the other two main important macronutrients, proteins and carbohydrates. Proteins are also very important in the body. They have several functions. They can be enzymes, biological catalysts, hormones, chemical messengers. They form part of the structure of the body, like the bones, muscles, tendons, hair. They play also a very important part in the immune system, as well as they provide transport, for example, albumin or transferrin. Remember that every food is a mix of three different types of macronutrients, as well as water. So when we talk about good sources, we are going to mention some at more than, in more than one place. When we talk about proteins, most people think about animal sources, like dairy, meat and eggs. But remember that beans and pulses, nuts and seeds and grains are also good sources. I would like to explain you the difference between animal and plant proteins. All the proteins that exist in the world, <clears throat> in living tissues, animals, humans or plants, are made up of 20 to 22 different base units called amino acids. Now this is a small demonstration. These are the amino acids. Now these amino acids make up very, very long chains of proteins. These proteins can be several hundreds or even a million uh, amino acid long. Some of these are called essential. It means that they have to come from the diet. But others can be transferred from one to another in the body. There are certain times in life when some of the amino acids actually become essential and the other ones are not, because due to illness or growth or age. So when the, when the need arises in the body to make a certain type of protein, then the body, based on the genetic code, is going to make that protein from the available amino acids. So let's imagine this scenario. We imagine that, that, that the body is like a big restaurant and the kitchen is the amino acid pool. So imagine that the waiter comes to the kitchen and says, okay, one lysine, two methionine and one tryptophan order because we want to make something like hair, for example. So this is what happens. So the kitchen sets out to make this protein. This is the long chain that we would like to end up with. Now, if the diet includes animal sources like meat, eggs and dairy, that we have, then we have all the base units necessary to make this chain. But if the source of protein is exclusively beans and pulses or exclusively grains and nothing else, then there would be some chain links missing. The interesting thing is, if we have beans and pulses and grains eaten together, then they complement each other. It is called mutual supplementation, because they actually have what the other one lacks. So plant sources can be good sources for proteins too, but it's very important to have a mixed diet and a variety of food sources for protein. Plant proteins actually contribute about two-thirds per person worldwide to the total protein intake, but only one third in North America. There's also a very interesting fact that we ourselves are sources for proteins as the inside of our body sheds cells and they 